First, I want to tell you that um, thank you for the honor and the privilege to stand up here before you. I take it very seriously, and uh, I try to study the Torah portion each and every week when I'm not given the five-minute debrief, but even more so when I am, because it's such a responsibility um, that I'm honored to do. And at the same time, I think we all should, you know. Um, but I want to apologize to you as well, because I spent most of the whole week and about eight hours yesterday studying the second half of the double portion last week. <laughs> so I read, today, I read this week's portion for the first time this morning. So if you'll, if you'll forgive me, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about both, because I dug into last week's portion <laughs> in depth. I mean, and actually spent uh, most of Tuesday and most of yesterday digging into it and looking up, you know, it's about the journey, and looking up, you know, 42 different places, you know, that they stopped and getting the meaning of each one of those words because I want to challenge you if you're not, you know, if you're thinking, you know, you know, we read this every year, you know, you know, I know it. There, there's too much. You know, I mean, there's just dig into it because the one thing that I got out of both portions that I get out of every one of them is that they all point to Yeshua. Amen. I mean, from beginning to end. And if you look for that and dig in that, and that's what he says to us is, is seek me and you will find me. And it is truth. So I want to share a few things from last week's because I did so much research on it. And then I'll, I'll talk about this week's as well. Um, you know, I started with where they started at Ramesses and then went through all these 42 places. And I want to challenge you to look some of these up yourself. So I'm not going to give you all of them, but, um, but some of them really stood out to me. Like Ramesses, uh, you bring this upon yourself, you know. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And I used like uh, the Bible dictionary and a couple of the sources. I know there's several different meanings for a lot of these, but these are the ones I got. And if you put them in order, because I looked up the 42... Uh, places that they stopped, and then I looked up, you know, how they, they put in charge each one of the, uh, the people of the tribes. But uh, here's a few of these that just stood out to me. Uh, Ramesses, uh, you bring this upon yourself uh, to cover, which is Sukkoth, Sukkoth, is that the pronoun right pronunciation? Then Ethan, strong, steadfast, firm. Uh, the next place was Pi, and I know I don't pronounce all these the right way, uh, <laughs> Pi Heroth, place where the reeds grow, and then on and on, you know, to grow up uh, bitter, um, great trees. Uh, one of my best friends uh, gave me this. I thought was such an insight. You know, at Elam, they stopped, and that's where it says great trees. And they had 12 springs of water and 70 palm trees. And he shared with me, so I can't take the credit, but uh, uh, one of my best friends shared with me, that uh, the 12 springs of water are 12 tribes and that the 70 palm trees are 70 nations. And then what I liked was he said, he said, uh, you know, the 70 nations will bear fruit when watered by Israel, the 12 tribes. Isn't that beautiful? Um, you know, two different places they stopped, the definition was testing. thought that was significant. Uh, wild bloom, pomegranate. Uh, breach. Then after, uh, you know, after they went through a lot of testing and everything, when they, you know, there was sort of a break there and they stopped in uh, uh, Libnoth, if I pronounce that right, started, you started seeing positive meanings like white, whiteness, watering, distillation, dew, place of gathering, beauty, uh, fright and fearful again, you know, assemblies, station, of course, father of Abraham, sweetness, fatness, bonds, sons of sorrow. Um, and, and it just goes on and on. So I would encourage you to, to look at those because if we get bored in reading our, you know, over and over every year, the, the Torah portions, there, there's, there's too much there for us to get bored with. We just have to dig and dig into it more and more. Um, you know, after I did that, you know, I like the order of things, you know, so... You know, in the second part where the leaders were to divide the land, I thought it was very significant that, you know, they, like from the tribe of Judah, they gave the, the lead to Caleb, right? 
so I put like Judah, then I put Caleb down at the bottom, and then I put Caleb's father, you know, and started looking up definitions of those, and then stopped when I realized last night I was in the wrong Torah portion. <laughs> but if you look at it, you see Judah, Simeon, Benjamin, Dan, Joseph, which of course Manasseh came out of, Ephraim, which also came out of Joseph, Zubalan, uh, Ishkar, Asher, and Nephilim. Nephilim, yeah, however you pronounce that from a southern accent. Um, but, you know, that's another different order of things compared to some of the other orders, like their marching orders, how he, how he named the, the sons of 12 tribes and stuff. L a lot there, just really beautiful. Um, so anyway, uh, on, um, on today's portion, I want to read a couple of things that, that really stood out to me this morning, and it goes so much with my testimony continuously and with what Russ said uh, in his uh, sharing this morning as well, you know, about the warehouse, and we don't have because we don't ask, or maybe in my case, before today, we ask, but we ask with the wrong heart, you know, um, and, and, and that's what I got out of this reading for the Torah this week, because if you look here in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 1, um, verse 20, and I said to you, you have come to the mountains of the Amorites, which the Lord your God is giving us. Look, the Lord your God has set the land before you. Go up and possess it as the Lord your God, your fathers have spoken to you. Do not fear or be discouraged. And then, of course, and every one of you came near to me and said, let us send men before us and let them search out the land for us and bring back word to us of the way by which we should go up and of the cities into which we shall come. And, of course, Moses went along with that. We all know this story. You know, we know about uh, Caleb and, and them going in there and 12 of them going in there and two coming back with the right message and 10 of them coming back with the wrong. But it's deeper than that because I asked my, the question to myself, why did this happen? Let me, let me finish this. Never, nevertheless, you would not go up but rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. And you complained in your tents and said, because the Lord hates us, he has brought us out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the land, into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. And the Lord got mad at them. And we all know that he got mad at them. And, and the Lord said, and the Lord heard the sound of the words and was angry and took an oath saying, surely not one of these men of these evil generations shall, shall see that good land of which I swore to give to your fathers, except Caleb, the son of <laughs> and he shall see it, and to him and his children I am giving the land on which he walked, because he wholly followed the Lord. And the Lord was also angry with me for your sake, saying, Even you shall not go in there. And Joshua, the son of Nun, who stands before you, he shall go in there, encourage him, for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. You know, and, and we all, I think, get the idea that they disobeyed God, right? But, but it's more than that. Because, you know, I think it really offended God. I know in my life, you know, what I'm seeing presently in my life, one of the many things, you know, the last seven, eight months, he has just poured his blessings out on me uh, spiritually and in every way. And I've grown so much, but I'm still, like, you know, way down here in the whole scope of things, you know. Because the Lord's saying... Hayes, look what I have before you, the promised land. Not just heaven, but I mean here on earth. Look what I have before you, but you won't take it. You won't walk out in faith. You won't grab it. You know, I want all these great things for you, and you settle for fear. You settle for unworthiness. You settle for doubt, you know. And I'm done with that, you know. I'm done with it. Today's a new day for me, you know, and I mean, and, and, and this week, let me just tell you what happened this week. You guys know, if you know me, you know that, you know, the Lord really speaks to me through business and money and things like that, because that's what gets my attention. You know, some, it may be health or whatever, but those are things that, 
you know, he has to say to me, don't worship it, but I want you to pursue it. Tuesday, as well as yesterday, I woke up practicing what we've been practicing for a couple of weeks, three weeks now, you know, Lord, what do you want me to do today? How do you want me to spend my time? How can I serve you today? And I can't say I do that every day, but on those two days I did it. (laughs) And I feel guilty if I have a waking moment that I'm not out working, you know, because I'm chasing money. You know, I'm chasing that bill that I owe or that responsibility that I should be doing. And I woke up Tuesday morning as well as yesterday morning. The Lord said, you worship me today. I'm going to teach you by me doing it for you first because I want you to take it over and you do it once you learn it. But you worship me today and quit worrying about that. And both of those two days, I had days of peace. I didn't feel guilty for not working. I worshiped the Lord. I read the word. I I prayed. I honored him. I just reached out. And it was like him saying, now look, you learn to do this because this is how I keep you in check. You've got to work. You've got to make money. But that's not your goal. That's not what you're doing it for. You seek me first, and then the rest will come. Thank you.